<laughs> Hello, everyone. Catherine Dimes here with Canadian recording artist Susie McNeil and Brian Mello. Merry Christmas. Merry, <laughs> Merry Christmas. You hear both of these amazing artists on Move 100. And to recap, uh, a little bit of both of you for new fans. I, sorry, I have to read. I made notes. You guys are busy, 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 busy. <laughs> uh, so um, Susan McNeil, uh, of course, you might remember her on the hit reality TV show, Rockstar in Excess, as a judge on YTV's The Next Star. Most recently, Susie, you've been writing and recording with your Nashville-based country band, Loving Mary. Uh, you guys toured extensively with Steven Tyler as his backup band. And just prior to the pandemic, Susie, you were performing with Aerosmith during their year-long Las Vegas residency. I'm tired reading all that. That's amazing. <laughs> That's a lot, Susie. <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, Brian, Brian Mello, you'll remember Brian uh, becoming a household name after winning Canadian Idol in 2007. Brian has shared the stage with Maroon 5, Rihanna Queen, Bon Jovi, uh, and after several years of songwriting in Nashville, you're back in Ontario, so welcome home. Thank you. Thank you very much. You guys are both amazing. You're, you're at it so much. So I want to talk about this new duet you have mistletoe miracle how did this all happen oh um <laughs> well brian and i have known each other for years i mean we had a lot of the same sort of career trajectory i feel like brian won canadian idol what year was it oh seven okay so it was right after i didn't win rockstar no <laughs> <laughs> and um you know we're both ontario natives and uh and then also my husband now uh used to play guitar with brian back when oh. they would tour together so uh, yeah. and they still play together oh. and i play with my husband as well so we share yeah. a guitar player her husband's one of my best friends he's i'm getting married in june he's in my wedding party he's oh. he's one of my closest friends so yeah. we've always had a <laughs> thank you thank and you. then i feel like we also have had like a lot of the same experiences and we can music similarly um in the music business as well like example when the pandemic hit my again my husband and I started a music school Brian started a mentorship program you know mm -hmm. I think we see the business in the same way I think after doing it as long as we have and still doing it that's the key yeah. that you have this specific way of looking at it I, I always joke too I was sort of chasing them around because they went to Nashville six months before I did oh, and then I moved to Nashville and then when they left Nashville they left six months before I did so oh. I've just sort of been following them around the last few years <laughs> that's wild a, so mistletoe miracle that's an interesting title for a song it's a beautiful song it's fun uh I want to see it in a holiday movie <laughs> <laughs> so do we so what's the what's the um what's the whole premise of uh, mistletoe miracle well, the song kind of came to be really quickly. So in the matter of, I think we wrote it just about five, six weeks ago, really. So usually, usually when you're writing a Christmas song, it's like Christmas in July, you start writing in the summer and, you know, recording, producing it. But this was sort of a last minute thing. And Susie approached me about us potentially doing a duet and her and Andrew always write together. And, and my writing partner, Paul Stevens and I, he's sort of my partner in crime. So uh, we combined forces and, uh, and Paul is such a great lyricist that, that he came with a lot of titles. And a lot of times when you're writing songs, uh, a title is a great place to start because mm -hmm. you can easily write yourself into a corner if you don't have that hook. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so Paul had this idea of doing the Mistletoe Miracle and sort of being this work party that two people didn't want to go to. And, you know, the girl wanting to stay home and kind of cuddle up with her blanket and watch Love Actually while the guy has to get some liquid courage to step into this party and... <laughs> through that they bump into each other and and uh have this kiss under the mistletoe and uh love it's, it's, it's a love story sight. yeah love so love yes. and, and i was sitting over listen. here that, that i that so it was three guys and myself in the writing session and paul came in with this mistletoe miracle as well as well as other ideas then i didn't totally get it at first <laughs> but all the guys in the room were like yes love it like <laughs> yeah and then i love how it how it turned out it is like a, he he is so 
you know, we we all contributed to lyrics as well, but Paul just has this way of just telling a story. Yeah, he really knows how to really cool. bring the idea uh, up yeah. uh, into life. And with with songwriting, it, it, it's sort of like a, I always look at it like a puzzle revealing itself. You know, so it's like you have this title, you have a couple of lyrics, and as you start writing, the picture starts to sort of reveal itself, and and it it sort of dictates where the song wants to go, and and you yeah. have mistletoe miracle after that. Yeah. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. What are your favorite Christmas traditions? I have one that we've tried to continue every year since I was oh, really little, probably like six or something. My mom would take my sister and I to Toronto. We grew up in Mississauga um, on Remembrance Day. And every year we kind of do the same thing. We look at the bay window at, at the bay. Uh, we, would, <laughs> we would grab lunch in this cafeteria we'd kind of like drive through like Chinatown and stuff in Toronto. And then we would pick out one ornament every year. Mm. So I actually have, some of them got lost along the way, but an ornament from when I was six all the way until now, we, we try to keep that tradition going for our kids now too. Yeah. Oh, Beat that. <laughs> well, I know. Uh, my, uh, my mother does this incredible Christmas village underneath oh, the Christmas tree. And, uh, we have we have two Christmas trees at my mother's house. So, yeah, you do. So I come from like this European home, and, uh, and so we have that that living room that nobody uses upstairs, you know. So so she has this Christmas tree, but literally the whole living room is is a Christmas village. Oh. So she's had she's had moments where there's like little rivers going through, no word of a lie. Um, mountains. We would go and go for a hike and collect moss off the rocks so that we could actually put it under the the Christmas village. So it's pretty intense. She is getting a little bit older. So this might be one of the last years she does it, but uh, that's been a tradition since, since as long as I can remember. Okay. You beat mine. (laughs) (laughs) Oh yeah. Yeah. The ornament's cool. Yeah. The ornament's cool. (laughs) An entire Christmas village. Ah. Do you guys ever get requests from your family to sing at Christmas? (laughs) A hundred percent. No. <laughs> oh, really? But she's a better singer than I am, so. <laughs> it's <laughs> no. because I come with the the accompaniment with but, my husband. Yeah, mine is we uh we always have music in the house. So it's more like we're dancing in the kitchen, we're dancing in the living room, we move the tables and chairs, you know, so uh, so that's that's more what we do. Every now and again, we'll bring out the guitars. My brothers are musicians as well, but oh, nice. yeah. Oh, yeah, oh, that's, that's awesome. awesome. Well, I hope you both have a beautiful holiday season. Thank you for Mistletoe Miracle. It's beautiful. It's fun. Everyone go uh, look up Brian Mello, Susie McNeil, Mistletoe Miracle. And uh, it's a great way to get yourself into the festive spirit. Thanks so much, Catherine. Thank you, Catherine. Happy holidays, everyone. Merry Christmas, guys.